खरनीय मंत कुशलेन यंतं संतं पदं अभिसमिंच सक्को जोच सोजो संतुंस कोच सुभ रोच अंप किंचोच सल हुकुंती संतिंद्रियोच निप कोच अंप गंबो कुले नच कुंदं समाचरे किंचि ये न विन्यु परे उपवदियुं सुकिनो आके मिनो मंतु संबे संता बावंतु सुकितं ये के चिपान भूतंति तसावतावरावा अनवसेसा दीघावाये महंतावा मंजिमारंस कानु दिन्थावायेव अंदिन्ता ये च दूरे वसंति अविदूरे भूतावासंभवेशिवा संभेशंता बावंतु सुकितंता न परो परंग निकुम्बेद न्याति मन्यत कंत चिनं कंचि ब्यारोस ना पटिक सन्या न्यान्य मन्यं सदुंक मिंचे मातायतानियं पुंतं आयुषा एक पुंत मनुरंगे एवं पिसंब भूतेशु मान संभाव ये अपरिमान मिंतंच संबलोकमिं मान संभावये अपरिमान उन्दं अदोच तिरियंच असंभादं अवेरं असपन तिन्धन चरं निसिंनुवा सयानुवा यावतंस विगतमिंदो इतं सतिं अदिन्तेय ब्रह्ममितं विहारं इदमाओ दिन ठिंच अनुपगम सीलवा दंस नीन संपन्नो कामी सुविनय गेदं नहीं जातु गंब से यं उन्हरे
Namo Buddhaya. A very good evening to all of you out there. Good evening. Namo Buddhaya. Venerable Sumangala Mangala. And brothers and sisters in the Dharma. This evening, we have many of you out there uh, watching from various parts of the country. We are very happy to welcome you to this third talk in this Dharma Vachana series, which is in commemoration of the 60th anniversary of Visak Day as an official national public holiday in Malaysia. We are commemorating because Visak Day was declared as a national public holiday in Malaysia in the year 1962. This is the 65th year. And during the time when the Buddhist community requests for Wisak Day to, to be declared as a public holiday began in 1926, when Venerable K. Gunaratana, Nayaka Mahatera of the Mahindrama Buddhist Temple in Penang, 
after the World War II, the British government said it will be considered uh, declaring a Vesak Day as a public holiday if both the Mahayana and Theravada traditions agree on the same date to celebrate Vesak Day. On the 1st of March 1949 at the Penang Buddhist Association, led by Ku Su Chin, the meeting decided in celebrating Visa Day on the full moon of May. Following the efforts of the Buddhist community and leaders of the then Malayan Buddhist Association, like the Venerable Chokmor, Venerable Syakim Bing, and Venerable Syakim Singh, and the, then the government of the day, Federation of Malaya, finally declares the day of Visa as a national public holiday for the whole federation beginning from 1962. As part of the many programs organized by the Malaysian Buddhist Festival, a six weekly series of the Dharma talks by prominent Malaysian monastic Dharma teachers has been planned. Today, Dharma talk is by Venerable Sumangala Bukuni is the third in the series. Brothers and sisters in the Dharma, please make yourself comfortable, relax your mind, and get ready to listen to the Dharma. And before that, let us invite Venerable Sumangala to join us. Namo Buddhaya. Venerable Sumangala. Namo Buddhaya. Uh, with, with respect, we would like to invite uh, Venerable to administer to us the three refuges ah, and the five precepts. And before that, we would like to pay homage to the tribute. Dang puja mi, damang puja mi, sanggang puja mi, that with due respect, we like to invite Venerable Sum Mangala to administer to us the three refuges together with the five precepts. Dear brothers and sisters in the Dhamma, we are now pays the salutation to the Buddha by reciting after the Venerable. Namo Tassa Bhagavato Arahato Samma Sambuddhasa 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 The Three Refuges Bhutang Saranang Gachami Bhutang Saranang Gachami Dhammang Saranang Gachami Dhammang Saranang Gachami Sangang Saranang Gachami Sangang Saranang Gachami Dutiyampi Putang Saranang Gachami Dutiyampi Putang Saranang Gachami 
Dutiampi sanggang saranang gacami. Dutiampi butang saranang gacami. Dutiampi butang saranang gacami. Tatiampi tamang saranang gacami. Tatiampi damang saranang gacami. Tatiampi sanggang saranang gacami. Tatiampi sanggang Saranang Gachami Panchasila, the five precepts Panati Pata Veramani Sikapadam Samadhyami Panati Pata Veramani Sikapadam Samadhyami Adinna dana veramani Sikapadang samadhyami Adinna dana veramani Sikapadang samadhyami Kame su michachara Deramani sikapadang samadhyami. Kame su michachara. Deramani sikapadang samadhyami. Musawadha deramani sikapadang samadhyami. Musawada Veramani Sikapadang Samadhyami Surame Raya Maja Pamadatana Veramani Sikapadang Samadhyami Surame Raya Maja Pamadatana Veramani Sikapadang Samadhyami Imani Pancha Sikapadani Samadhyami Imani Pancha Sikapadani Samadhyami Imani Pancha Sikapadani Samadhyami Imani Pancha Sikapadani Samadhyami Appamadena Sampadeta Amaye Sadhu 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 Sukhita Now we shall compose our mind, the regular elect to our mind, the Buddha, the Dhamma, and the Sangha.
Itipiso bhagava araham samma sambuddha vicca charana sambhano sugato loka vidu anuttaro purisadamma sarati sat Tadevamanu sanang Buddha Bhagavati. The next slide, please. Swakato Bhagavata Dhammo Sanditiko Akaliko. Ehi pasiko, opanaiko, pachatam veritabo, vinyohiti. Suparipanno bhagavato savaka sango. Ujo paripanno bhagavato savaka sango Nyaya paripanno bhagavato savaka sango Sami chi paripanno bhagavato savaka sango Yadidam chattari purisa yugani Atta purisa pugala Esa bhagavato savaka sango Ahuneyo pahuneyo Dakhineyo anjani karaniyo Anuttaram punya ketam lokasati Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu So cute. Namo Buddhaya and good evening, Ayasamankala, brothers and sisters in the Dharma. Today, we are very pleased to invite Venerable Samankala Ikuni to be for us. Despite her very busy schedule, the past one month in the Samaneri Innovation Program, followed by the Vesak celebration, we are very grateful and thankful to Venerable Sumangala Ikuni to be first today, despite her very busy schedule. And in commemoration of the 60th anniversary of Vesak Day as an official national public holiday in Malaysia, Venerable Sumangala will be giving a Dhamma talk today with the title Vesak, Marriage and Enlightenment. Brothers and sisters in the Dharma, if you have any questions pertaining to this talk, you may type your questions in the comment section. We shall then invite Venerable Sumangala to answer your questions after the talk. However, due to time constraint, we might not be able to answer all questions, in which case we ask for your understanding and forgiveness. I think many of us already know Venerable Sumangala very well, but for the benefit of those who may be new with her. Please allow me to do a bit of introduction of Venerable Sumangala. Venerable Sumangala Bikuni renounced her corporate life and became an Anaka Rika since 2005 under the spiritual guidance of Venerable Mahinda Terra and Venerable Nati Male Sumeda Maniyo. Subsequently, she took her papaja or going forth in 2008 
And in 2015, she took her high ordination of Upa Sampata of Pikuni. Currently, Venerable Samangkara Pikuni is the abbess of uh, Arya Vihara. She frequently gave Dhamma talks in uh, various Buddhist societies and conferences, conduct meditation retreats in Malaysia and abroad. She also conducts a Dhamma education program for family, family youth and children camp, metta and mindfulness workshop, compassion in action projects, and leading Buddhist pilgrimages and counseling for those in need, and etc. etc. She also pioneered the Arya monastic and lady training program, one of the first Theravada Pikuni and lady development program to nurture potential noble practitioner and Pikuni Sangha in Malaysia. At present, she is leading a building project team and invite all supporters to build the new Arya Vihara at Kwasa Tamansara, the first Malaysian Theravada Pikuni Nunnery and Dharma Training Center. Brothers and sisters in the Dharma, with respect, let's fold our palms together to invite Venerable Sumangala Pikuni to deliver the Dharma talk, Vesa, Marys, and Enlightenment. Aya, with deep respect. Thank you very much, uh, Brachim and the uh, committee of uh, My Vesa 60. Yeah? So, firstly, I'd like to greet everyone. Happy Vesa. And let's connect our heart to the Buddha, Dhamma, and the Sangha. Namo Buddhaya, Namo Dhammaya, Namo Sanghaya. Oh, dear brothers and sisters in the Dhamma, uh, indeed, is a blessing for us to be able to connect our heart and to speak of the Dhamma so that more and more people will walk the Dhamma's way and uh, be able to realize the Dhamma for the well-being and protection and for the well-being and protection of all. Firstly, we have heard about the introduction of Besa and how fortunate are we in Malaysia to celebrate Besa uh, the 60 year, yeah? And uh, indeed, I'd like to relate this and to be thankful for our connection with the celebration. And as we recall to mind how we get connected to the early teaching of the Buddha, the Pali Canon, and we have to be very thankful to Venerable Ananda's devotion and his brilliant memory in preserving the Buddha's word. And uh, in the Mahaparinamara Sutta that we can refer to, we can also see the gist or summary of the Buddha's teaching for 45 years. So uh, in the Pali uh, tradition, uh, the Buddha was born in year 623 and uh, passed into Parinibbana 543 BE, and uh, today or this year we are celebrating Vesak 2500 years, 2566 years. Yeah, BE. So, this is a time uh, to celebrate and also to reflect. To celebrate because we know that there's a man that's born into this world, yeah, and he uh, by his striving and discovery, attain enlightenment. And also, he has a way of passing into Parinibbana. And we should be very fortunate to learn and to celebrate this day because beings in the world, they are mostly are ignorant. And uh, by having someone leading the way and discover this path, uh, it is good that we have this uh, yardstick for us to reflect our own journey to free ourselves from samsara, to free ourselves from suffering, and to walk the way that the Buddha has shown uh, to liberation, enlightenment. So I'd like also to bring uh, everyone's attention uh, in the importance yeah, of the discovery or the revival of the four holy sites in India and Nepal. We know that 
Buddhism disappear yeah, from India and Nepal uh, for about 600 years after uh, 12th uh, AD. And it's only revived uh, in the year uh, at the late uh, 19th century. And we also have to be thankful to Anagarika Dhammapala, who has uh, uh, worked very hard throughout his lifetime yeah, to revive all these holy sites for us to be able to connect back uh, to the Buddha. As my own experience, yeah, to visit the four holy sites, the birth place of the Buddha, that is Lumbini, and his enlightenment at Bodh Gaya, and also the first sermon where the Buddha preached is in Sanath, and also the last, the Buddha's Mahaparinibbana at Kusinara. Uh, in the Mahaparinibbana Sutta, yeah, when we hear about uh, these particular uh, places, uh, what is mentioned there is that whoever that actually go to this place, if they do not have faith in the Buddha, this will bring them faith. And for those who already have faith, then their faith will increase. In my own experience, I feel that this is so true, yeah? And in the past, I used to have the idea of the Buddha, although I was uh, learning and knowing that the information I have historically, the Buddha was born in Lumbini. But behind my mind, I used to think that the Buddha as someone, just like any other religion, that the Buddha is a big G God. Yeah? And uh, so in one way, uh, deep in the mind, although we know that he is born, he was born as a human, but uh, still we couldn't really embrace and comprehend that understanding as we always do certain prayer to the Buddha and we tend to take him as someone that's probably in the heaven or somewhere that is always uh, showering us with the blessings and answering our call yeah and uh, in my experience when i was uh, having this pilgrimage tour to uh, india and when i stand in front of the uh, mahabodhi temple suddenly i realized that the Buddha has attained enlightenment at that place. And I start to realize that the Buddha is really very down to earth. And the Buddha is a human, but he's a special human that has found a way to liberate our samsaric cycle. And he has shown the way and if the Buddha can actually do it, yeah? And we are so lucky to have this path from the Buddha. And we too will be able to realize that awakening just like the Buddha. So from that experience, my thoughts of the Buddha as someone in the heaven or you know, someone that is showering us with all the answers that we pray for, totally vanish. Yeah, and I start to see the importance of walking the path as shown by the Buddha, as we are so fortunate to be born as a human. And today, we are so fortunate to uh, be able to go to the Buddha's holy site and to really understand the teaching of the Buddha that is so down to earth and is practical and is leading the way to freedom from samsaric cycle from birth and death. So indeed, the Buddha's four holy sites brings a lot of faith and also uh, brings those who have faith to increase their faith. And nowadays, I also bring people to go for pilgrimage for a Buddhist to experience uh, the Buddha's journey and the Buddha's teaching at the site that where the Buddha taught before and it's always very inspiring and most of them are very motivated 
to walk the Dhamma's way. Yeah? So next, I'd like to also uh, share. We know that uh, Vaisa, we celebrate the birth, the uh, enlightenment, and the Mahaparinibbana of the Buddha. So one very important thing that uh, we have to understand is the word that Bodhisatta is meaning is one intent on enlightenment. And we know that when the Buddha was born, yeah, and uh, <clears throat> as Siddhartha Gautama, uh, name itself uh, indicate very important things, means wish fulfilled. Yeah? And he declared to the world, I'm the chief of the world, elders in the world, and this is the last birth. Sometimes we may wonder whether a baby can speak, yeah? but nevertheless, nowadays, I think with a lot of internet, we can see a lot of child prodigy, yeah? but this is not a normal prodigy. This is a, a child who has that strong intent, not only one life, two life, three life, but thousands or millions of life, the intent for enlightenment. yeah. So during Vesa, we celebrate by bathing the baby Buddha. Yeah. And if we just do the ritual of doing uh, bathing baby Buddha, then of course it may not be very meaningful. But if we know the reason of that ritual, then the thoughts that comes in as one do the ritual of bathing the baby Buddha, then if one can reflect on the purpose of Siddhartha Gautama coming to this world and how he uh, purified his mind and uh, became the Buddha. So in the process of seeking enlightenment, the Buddha realized there are two paths, yeah? And uh, there are two kinds of search. So one is called ignoble search, yeah? And the other one is called noble search. So what is ignoble search? And this happened to most of us, but we can reflect, yeah? And this is what the Buddha went through yeah? as Siddhartha Gautama. He said, yeah, in the Arya Pariyasana Sutta, uh, Majjhima Nikaya 26. The Buddha said, I too, monks, before my awakening, when I was an unawakened bodhisattva, being subject myself to birth, six happiness in what is likewise subject to birth, being subject to aging, illness, death, sorrow, defilement, I seek happiness in what is likewise subject to illness, death, sorrow, defilement. So the Buddha reflected, yeah? if one is to search in this manner, can one truly find true happiness? Then the Buddha further find out, of course, the answer is no. So the Buddha reflected again. And he think, if a person yeah, himself being subject to birth, seeing the drawbacks of birth, seeks the unborn, unexcel rest from the yoke, unbinding, himself being subject to aging, illness, death, sorrow, defilement, seeing the drawbacks of aging, illness, death, sorrow, defilement, sick, the agingless, sickless, deathless, sorrowless, undefiled, unexcel rest from the yoke, unbinding. So this is where the Buddha set out to renounce and to search for the answer to the ultimate happiness. And this is where in Vesa, I think we need to reflect uh, the baby Buddha 
uh, Siddhartha Gautama throughout his 29 years of life. Yeah, he's actually searching. Just like all of us are searching. And anyone, if you ask them, they are searching for happiness. But how? A lot of people are still searching. Yeah, so during Vesa, it's always good for us to reflect the years that the Buddha have gone through. And in a short time, we can find the answer. So let us uh, investigate further. Yeah. Again, we look at during Vesa, what do we do? We worship the Buddha. We make offerings to the Buddha. We make good wishes and aspiration. And we uh, tend to wish to get blessings yeah, from the Sangha. So these are some of the activities that a Buddhist yeah, do during Vesa. And there are many different uh, type of uh, devotees. Some are once a year Vesa goer. Some are also a practitioner. And some may just yet to know about Buddhism. And uh, through the activities, may they, find, may they also find out some connection to what the Buddha actually really teach. And in this Vesa, uh, there are many opportunities for them also to get connected to the Buddha's Dhamma. Now, during the enlightenment of the Buddha, yeah, so we worship the Buddha. So what are we worshipping? Yeah. We have to reflect. Yeah, Vesa is also significance to reflect on the Buddha's enlightenment. So during the Buddha's enlightenment, the Buddha, after this particular uh, joy yeah, of enlightenment, and it's in Dhammapada verses 153 and 154. And the Buddha mentioned, Anika jati sangsarang sandavisang anipisang gahakarakang gave santo dukkha jati punapunang gahakarakadito si punagehang nakahasi sabbate pasuka baga gahakutang visan kitang visan karang gatang chitang Tanhanang kaya majaga ti. What does it mean? The Buddha said uh, during his enlightenment, he reflected, I who have been seeking the builder of this house, the body, uh, failing to attain enlightenment and not finding, have wandered through innumerable births in samsara. To be born again and again is indeed dukkha means it's indeed suffering. O house builder, you are seen. You shall build no house for me again. All your rafters are broken. Your roof tree is destroyed. My mind has reached the unconditioned, Nibbana, the end of craving. Means the fruition of an arahant has been attained. So this is the utterance of supreme joy that the Buddha experienced during his enlightenment. And during this enlightenment too, the Buddha uh, experienced uh, three kinds of high knowledge Yeah, that is so important to show the path of enlightenment. So the Buddha is able to recollect his past life not one life, not two life, not ten life, or hundred life, or one thousand life, but millions of his life. And to see this past life, I think we will be also awakened with the dukkha, the suffering that each and every one or every being has been going through. The second knowledge that the Buddha realized is the arising and vanishing of being due to their karma, means their thoughts speech and bodily actions and how beings uh, from let's say human life uh, pass away and then reappear in another realm 
either in heaven realm or in the hell realm or ghost realm or animal realm or deva realm and according to their karma and this is where the importance of understanding the cause and effect of each and every action that we perform then the next the buddha also realized and this is a very unique discovery on how the arising of suffering and how suffering can be ended and this is called the dependent origination and in summary that the famous four noble truth yeah is uh, expounded the way the path to enlightenment so next i'd like to also bring uh, your attention on the ringvesa yeah how we also celebrate yeah we may also circumambulate the stupa and some during this particular uh, vesa we will also be doing uh, studying of the dhamma or reading of the sutta or doing meditation and also maybe a visiting exhibition uh, dhamma exhibition or vesa exhibition or even yeah uh, with uh, other charitable work yeah during this particular period and of course the buddha said in order for us to really worship him respect him yeah the highest respect that we can give to the buddha is by practicing the buddha's teaching yeah and especially through the noble training the threefold training now if we look at how the buddha uh, brings about yeah uh, the growth or the well-being of the people like for example we celebrate Vesa and Vesa was also celebrated uh, in one way for the Buddhists to unite themselves yeah and to reflect on that day uh, good thoughts and a good way of developing themselves and to bring uh, growth among themselves and how it affect the family, community, and the nation. So in the Mahaparinibbana Sutta, yeah, we know that the stupa is one of the item that the Buddha mentioned uh, for all of us yeah, uh, to venerate, not because of the structure, but having look at a stupa where it contain, yeah, uh, the relics of the noble ones brings about the faith and also the thoughts, the good thoughts, the qualities of the Buddha. And as we recall to mind, it uplift the mind. Yeah. So in this way that we are able to connect also to the Buddha's teaching and to connect to the Sangha. And the Sangha, of course, is headed by the Buddha. So in commemorating the Mahaparinibbana of the Buddha, uh, I'd like also to bring attention here. Yeah? And interestingly, in the Mahaparinibbana Sutta, we can see the Buddha starts with something very practical, uh, very down to earth, to state uh, the importance of a nation that is in harmony. We can all know that uh, the, the Buddhist teaching disappeared from India due to war, due to famine, and due to the invasion. And when the ruler <clears throat> changed their religion, and that is where the Dhamma can also be disappeared from that place. And here the Buddha mentioned about the importance of the conditions, yeah? there are seven conditions for the welfare of people, uh, for the bhikkhus and bhikkhunis, sangha, and the growth of nation. Uh, it's important for us to reflect the importance of frequent gatherings and meetings that is well attended by the people. And people assemble and disperse peacefully and attend 
their affairs in Concord. Yeah? And they neither enact new decrees nor abolish existing ones, but proceed in accordance with their ancient constitutions. They show respect, honor, esteem, and veneration towards their elders, which they think worthwhile to listen to them. Number five, they refrain from abducting women and maidens of good families and from detaining them. Number six, they show respect, honor, esteem, and veneration towards their shrines, both those within the city and those outside it, and do not deprive them of the due offerings as given and made to them formally. Number seven, they duly protect and guard the arahats, so that those who have not come to the realm yet might do so, and those who have already come might live there in peace. Yeah? So this is also uh, the importance of the Buddhist community yeah? uh, to keep uh, this as lay people, and these are the seven conditions that bring welfare for the people and also for the nation. And when the nation is growing strong, then of course the people can practice uh, their spirituality well and uh, the nation also will grow. Uh, the well-being of the people also grow. And what about how the Sangha uh, are bringing welfare to themselves and also to the nation? Yeah? They should also assemble, assemble frequently in large numbers meet and disperse peacefully, attend affairs of the Sangha in Concord, preserve training rules, code of training, show respect, honor, esteem, and veneration towards the elder, thinking they are worthwhile to listen to them. And they are not influenced by craving that leads to fresh becoming, and they cherish the forest dwellings, established in mindfulness, so that virtuous ones of the order who have not come yet might do so, and those already come might live in peace. So these are the importance of the lay people and also the Sangha to uh, practice the conditions that helps to bring uh, more and more good practitioners and uh, more and more uh, those who will be able to attain to that uh, sinliness and that uh, attainment of liberation yeah, to the highest as arahats. Now, how do we practice then uh, in order for this to be materialized? There are these five things, yeah, the Buddha said that are welcome, agreeable, pleasant, and hard to obtain in the world. What are they? What are these five? The first one is long life. Second, beauty. Third, happiness. Fourth, status. Five, rebirth in heaven. So these are the things that we all look forward to, especially when we are a lay person. But the Buddha mentioned, yeah? So in Ves uh, during Vesa, I think uh, sometimes even not Vesa or when we go to the temple, uh, we pray for all this, yeah? And the Buddha said, these five things are not to be obtained, yeah? By reason of prayers or wishes. If they were to be obtained by reason of prayers or wishes, who here would lack of them? Yeah, because a lot of people pray a lot. Yeah, and the Buddha further said it's not fitting for the disciple of the noble ones who desires long life to pray for it, or to delight in doing so. Yeah. Instead, the disciple of the noble ones who desire long life or beauty, or happiness, or status, or rebirth in heaven, should follow the path of practice leading to long life, or leading to beauty, or leading to happiness, or leading to status, or leading rebirth in heaven. In so doing, he will attain long life, beauty, happiness, status, rebirth in heaven, either human or divine. So uh, prayer may start with a good thoughts, yeah? But the Buddha advises us, if in case we really look forward for all these five things that we're yearning for, so we should 
practice or follow the path of practice that leads to that quality. Yeah. So for those who delight in aspiring for these things in great measure continuously, the wise praise heedfulness in making merit. So here the Buddha said, what we should do, we should be heedful in making merits. So the wise person, heedful, acquires a twofold welfare, means welfare in this life and welfare in the next. So by victoring through to his welfare, is called prudent or wise, yeah? So how do we actually uh, go about making more merits, yeah? In the Itibutaka 60, uh, the Buddha mentioned, yeah, there are these three grounds of making merits. Number one is giving, dana. Number two is virtue, sila. And number three, Cultivation of mind, bhavana. So one should train in deeds of merit that yield to long-lasting happiness. Generosity, a balanced life, developing a loving mind. By cultivating these three things, deeds yielding happiness, the wise person is reborn in bliss. And how do we actually perform the giving, yeah? So the merits of giving will come if one has a right attitude, uh, the mindset towards giving. Yeah? So before giving, the giver is glad. While giving, the mind is bright and clear. After giving, the giver is gratified. Yeah. So this is the way of giving and it's a very meritorious way of giving. Yeah? So how we can have overflowing merits? Yeah? So in Anguttara Nikaya 4.60, the Buddha mentioned, yeah? when a noble disciple serve the mendicant Sangha, who are ethical and on the right path with ropes, arms, lodgings, and medicine, and supplies for the sick. When a noble disciple does these four things, they are practicing appropriately for a layperson, which brings fame and leads to heaven. And the Buddha also mentioned about the merits of uh, seasonal gifts. Yeah? In Nagotara Nikaya 5.36, in the proper season, they give those with discernment, responses free from stinginess, having been given in proper season, with hearts inspired by the noble ones, straighten such their offering bears an abundance. Those who rejoice in that gift or give assistance, they too have a share of the merit. And the offering isn't depleted by that. So with an unhesitant mind, one should give where the gift bears great fruit. Mary is what establishes living beings in the next life. So even the person that give or the person who receives the gift or rejoice in that gift, they too share the marriage. And the person who performed the marriage and share the marriage, their marriage actually increase, not deplete. Yeah? Benefits of giving. Yeah? A giver, a donor is dear and beloved by many people. Number two, the benefit, good and spiritual people will associate with them. And this is so important yeah? because when good and spiritual people associate with them, they teach them the Dhamma to dispel suffering. Yeah? And uh, by understanding the teaching, then one can extinguish uh, without defilements. Number three benefit, those who give, yeah, they get a good reputation. Number four, they don't neglect a layperson's duties. 
Number five, when their body breaks up after death, they are reborn in a good place, a heavenly realm. So what is the best gift? Yeah? The Buddha said in Dhammapada 354, the gift of the Dhamma excels all gifts. The taste of the Dhamma excels all tastes. Delight in the Dhamma excels all delights. The eradication of craving, attainment of aranship, overcomes all ills. So these are some of the aspects that we share. And of course, there are more to making marriage to the dana. And what other marriage that we can actually uh, develop there yeah, in the uh, goal of attaining enlightenment yeah, are the marriage that is sila. Yeah? So the Buddha has shown us a way as a great teacher and a role model. And uh, he has inspired us through cultivation yeah, for the development of noble being. So sila, virtue. And uh, next of the threefold training is samadhi, which is uh, translated as right concentration. But of course, it's more than that quality itself, which uh, involves the four jhanas. And third, panya, yeah, the insight, knowledge, skill, realization, and continuity of training for the purification of being yeah, to liberation. So these are also higher merits that we can develop. And also the Buddha has mentioned yeah, how can we increase our marriage uh, to that practice. So there are eight streams of merit, which is uh, wholesome, is nutriments of happiness, and is heavenly, ripening in happiness, and conducive to heaven that lead to what is wished for, desire, and agreeable, and to one's welfare and happiness. And what are these eight streams of marriage? Yeah? First, the Buddha mentioned the first stream is one has gone for refuge to the Buddha. Second one, one has gone for refuge to the Dhamma. And third, one has gone for refuge in the Sangha. Just now, we have just taken our three refuges and also the five precepts. Yeah. So this is indeed a meritorious action and it's a stream of marriage. So this kind of marriage is a wholesome marriage and it's a nutriment of happiness, heavenly and ripening in happiness, conducive to heaven. And that leads to what is wished for, desire and agreeable to one's welfare and happiness. It is because by uh, taking refuge in a triple gem, we are able to come to learn, to listen to the Dhamma, and to comprehend the Dhamma, and to realize the Dhamma. And what is Dhamma? Dhamma is that which uplift one from falling into woeful state or falling into suffering. So this is a meritorious deed. And indeed, when one takes refuge in a triple gem, and that is how they can start to increase the development of their happiness, their confidence, and this merit will lead them to higher knowledge, higher wisdom, and a higher liberation. So what are the other five yeah, uh, stream of marriage? The, the other five, the Buddha mentioned, there are five gifts, great gifts, primal, of long-standing, traditional, ancient, unadulterated, and never before adulterated, which are not being adulterated and will not be adulterated, not repudiated by wise ascetics and Brahmins. So what are the other five? The Buddha said, having abandoned the destruction of life, having uh, abandoned the <clears throat> taking what is not given, and also the third precept, having abandoned yeah, uh, sexual misconduct and having abandoned uh, lying, uh, having abandoned uh, taking 
intoxicants. So the Buddha mentioned by abstaining from all this, yeah, we give an immeasurable number of beings freedom from fear, enmity, and affliction. And in return, one can enjoy immeasurable freedom from fear, enmity, and affliction. So this is uh, the first, second, third, fourth, and fifth gift, a great gift, not repudiated by wise ascetics and Brahmins. So these are the way how we can practice yeah, the, the streams of marriage, even by uh, taking, mar uh, taking refuges, yeah, the three refuges, and practicing the five precepts. Yeah? So <clears throat> the Buddha mentioned uh, for us to reflect, yeah? and I think during Vasa it's also very important for us to understand the Buddha mentioned uh, the destiny of moral and immoral actions. Yeah? So these are principles of life. The Buddha mentioned the immoral man, householders, by falling away from virtue, yeah? not practicing the principles of life, the precept, will encounter five perils. Great loss of wealth through heedlessness, number one. Number two, an evil reputation. Number three, a timid and troubled demeanor in every society be it that of nobles, brahmans, householders, or ascetics, or number six, death in bewilderment, and number seven, at the breaking up of the body after, sorry, number five, yeah? at the breaking up of the body after death, rebirth in the realm of misery in an unhappy state, in the netherworld, in hell. And what are the five blessings for those who keep or practice the five principles of life, the five precepts? The blessings that accrue to them yeah, through the practice of virtue. Number one, great increase of wealth through his diligence. Number two, a favorable reputation. Number three, a confident deportment. Number four, without timidity in every society, be it that of nobles, brahmans, householder, or ascetics. Number five, a serene death and the breaking up of the body after death rebirth in a happy state in the heavenly world. So these are the way of accruing marriage to the practice of the five precepts. And even just five precepts, it brings so much benefit and blessings to one. Yeah. So uh, the prayer that we have should commensurate yeah, with uh, all these practices so that we'll be able to really answer our prayer for long life happiness yeah strength beauty yeah and the last part i would like to share is on the merits of bhavana which is the highest among you know dana sila bhavana and uh, from sila samadhi panya yeah so the buddha mentioned yeah as long as we cultivate yeah the seven factors of enlightenment which is mindfulness investigation into phenomena, energy, bliss, tranquility, concentration, and equanimity. If we are able to cultivate this particular factors of enlightenment, definitely it will lead us to that enlightenment. And along the way, uh, the Buddha also advised us to remember the six conditions that will help us uh, to drive this journey to enlightenment uh, in a more conducive way, that is to practice, yeah, uh, to attend to each other with loving kindness, indeed, word and thought. So, in respect of offerings, yeah, the Sangha also will be able to share with all the virtuous members of the community and in the company with their spiritual companion, they should all train themselves and the rules of conduct, which are complete and perfect, spotless and pure, liberating and praised by the wise, and uninfluenced by mundane concerns and favorable to concentration of mind. And the other one that to be remembered is in company with their spiritual companion, they should preserve the insight that is noble and liberating, and leads one who acts upon it to the utter destruction of suffering. 
So these are the way how we can cultivate marriage. And this marriage are not just a marriage, but is incremental marriage that leads to the ultimate liberation one day. So for the Vesa, yeah, uh, we celebrate and reflect with meaningful and also a proper way of how we can uh, answer all our prayers so that we'll be able to realize the ultimate happiness, the ultimate freedom that brings us uh, or bring us to the end of suffering and to the ultimate goal of liberation. And interestingly, yeah, we have this Dana Sila Bhavana, we talk about the human, but even the devas uh, would like to share the marriage. Yeah. And uh, when the Buddha was asked about, you know, what is the best gift, yeah, and the Buddha answered the the best gift is, of course, uh, the Dhamma is the best gift that excels all gifts. Yeah? And uh, so the Devas, Lord Saka, uh, would actually requesting, he said, if the gift of the Dhamma excels all gifts, why are we not invited to share the merits whenever gifts of the Dhamma are made? Yeah? Then Lord Saka said, Venerable Sir, I pray that from now on we may be given a share in the merit of good deeds. And then the Buddha asked all the bhikkhus to assemble and assault them to share the merit of all their good deeds with all beings. So these are uh, indeed they are the holistic uh, understanding yeah, about uh, our presence in the world and uh, with all other beings and how we can uh, uh, accrue marriage and share marriage and also even to share with our departed ones. So they too will be able to benefit from the good deeds that we've done. And of course, ultimately, uh, during Vesa, as we commemorate the birth, enlightenment, and also the Mahaparinana of the Buddha, we should always uh, remember that the ultimate goal of our journey as a Bodhisattva, a one who intend on enlightenment, it is to practice to avoid the two extremes, which is indulgence in sensual pleasure, and the other one is addicted to self-mortification. And we should <clears throat> practice the Noble Eightfold Path and to realize the four noble truth. So the Buddha say the Dhamma Vinaya is our teacher and whichever teaching yeah, that consists of noble eightfold path and the practitioner practice heedfully this noble eightfold path, then the world won't be short of arahats. And the Buddha lastly, urge us that all conditional things are impermanent. So strive on hopefully towards liberation. So on this Vesak day, we'd like to uh, again remind and rejoice that Budang Saranang Gachami, Dhammang Saranang Gachami, Sangang Saranang Gachami. And we thank you for your attention. May we be well and happy, and may you realize the ultimate Nibbana at the earliest opportunity. And happy Vesa. Thank you. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. Thank you, and uh, sadhu, Aya, for the very interesting, inspiring, and uh, insightful uh, Dhamma talk today on how the Buddha was born in his last rebirth and how he eventually attained uh, enlightenment and finally uh, attained Paridipana on the full moon day of May, that's on Vesak day, and how we should celebrate and uh, Vesak 
and also uh, to reflect on the significance of Vesa and uh, how we should give our last, our greatest respect, our highest respect to the Buddha by practicing the Dharma as taught by the Buddha. And Venerable Sumangkala also uh, reminded us that uh, instead of just uh, conduct prayer or just to pray, we should lead our life, we should live our life that lead us to what we want, uh, for example, long life, happiness, good luck, status, and uh, rebirth in heaven. So we should reflect on, on all this and practice our, or live our life by practicing dana, sila, and bhavana instead of just uh, to pray and to accumulate all those uh, good merits which are conducive to cultivate ourselves following the noble evil path to our eventual goal of enlightenment, is it? Mm. I sum up correctly. <laughs> yeah. Yes. <laughs> so uh, now uh, it's a time for uh, Q and A, question and answer. Uh, brothers and sisters in the Dharma, if you have any question for Ayasumangala, you may key in your question in the comment section. Do you have any question? Uh, Aya, mm -hmm. some people did a lot of uh, meritorious deeds and yet suffer a lot in their life. While others did a bit of meritorious deeds but enjoy a good life. Why is this so? Mm -hmm. All right, when the uh, year when we say um, do a lot of meritorious deeds, yeah, so we can see that uh, among Buddhists, yeah, we can see they do a lot of meritorious deeds to dana, yeah, to dana. So when we do dana alone, yeah, it is good, yeah, it is good, but that alone does not uh, transform the mind, yeah, to a higher. Uh, level uh, that can be able yeah, to understand the Dhamma. So uh, there are different kind of people doing different kind of dana. For example, uh, some people, of course, they are very stingy. They can't even do dana, right? Some people, they do uh, dana, um, but they have a uh, uh, greed that follow that dana. For example, a lot of us, you know, if you see they bring maybe 10 apples to the temple and they perform that uh, act of uh, offering to the Buddha and they find that oh, that is a meritorious deed yeah, they are performing. But when they do the prayers of the 10 apples, they want maybe 10,000 ringgit lottery yeah? or they want uh, something else yeah, that uh, maybe their children will pass exam and all those kind of things. And sometimes yeah, they offer to the Sangha again when it's followed by the tinge of greed, yeah, uh, meaning that marriage itself are uh, not as high as if they have a pure intention of offering uh, to uh, offer with the understanding of that indeed is a good thing. Yeah? And uh, therefore, their marriage, their happiness is pure and uh, they are happy. And also, when they offer as a person who give, yeah, just now I've mentioned, yeah, uh, the thought of giving, you know, they, they're happy about it. While giving, their mind is bright and clear eh, in giving. And after giving, they are gratified. Yeah, But uh, sometimes you see that people, you know, they offer things. Uh, after giving, they are not happy. Or while giving, they are not happy. So, you know, they are counter-conflict of uh, uh, the, the intention or the happiness. So if that person are doing uh, meritorious deed to this kind of uh, uh, mental attitude, of course, you know, their they are, they are transformation are not there. They still get angry. They are greedy. Yeah. And uh, therefore, they don't really uh, enjoy or, you know, they are, they are good deeds. Yeah. But sometimes some people, they may did, uh, we say they did less meritorious deeds. Uh, is it meaning because they do less dana? But maybe they do a lot of cultivation, like uh, they practice the five percent well, yeah, and they do bhavana. But you see them, they do, do less dana, let's say. They do, but they do less than other people, uh, but they cultivate their mind, yeah. And this is even higher marriage, right? And so, of course, you know, they have transformation, they have good quality of the mind, uh, they have kindness in their heart, 
So when you have kindness, you have metta, you have compassion, you have altruistic joy or equanimity, of course you enjoy life better, isn't it? Everything that comes is more happy and uh, you understand what, what it is. And uh, so this can actually probably answer the question that uh, why some people, they do certain meritorious deeds, they are still suffering because the importance is the Buddha mentioned, dana sila bhavana. So dana, we say, good, but sila, better. Bhavana, or the best. Yeah. So it's a different level of merits. Yeah? So we cannot just compare or judge, yeah? but we have to know what what actually brings higher and higher merit? What transformed the mind to become more pure, become more happy, become more uh, vibrant, wise, and they you know free? Yeah. So I hope I answer the question, uh, Rajiv. Yeah. yeah, that's a very profound uh, answer. Uh, I think it's important for us to uh, maintain a uh, wholesome state of mind. Is it? Uh, yeah. Mm. Yeah, wholesome states and also a uh, higher state. Huh? Mm. Okay. Uh, we go for a second question. Mm. Sister Yilin Tan from uh, KCPA, uh, she asked, the words sharing and dedication of merits are used interchangeably, which is correct. Mm. Some people use sharing of merits, some people use dedication of merits. <laughs> So normally, actually, in the English, they translate for devas, they normally say sharing of marriage. Yeah, for departed ones, they say dedication of marriage. Yeah. So it's just like, you know, the Buddha mentioned, like dedication of marriage, like sharing of marriage is for all, uh, like among the people and also the higher, uh, what do you call, the, those heavenly beings. Yeah. And dedication of marriage is normally to uh, departed ones. Yeah. So the Buddha mentioned about, uh, you know, just like the rain uh, accrue, yeah, accumulate in a valley. And uh, then the, this particular marriage that we accrue, also we dedicate yeah, for the uh, departed ones, just like uh, the rain water, they flow towards the sea. Yeah? So may this also uh, be dedicated to them. So normally we use sharing of marriage for the devas and dedication of marriage for the departed ones. Mm. Yeah. yeah, thank you. Uh, yeah, mm. I think uh, Sister Lin uh, have a better understanding now of uh, mm. the difference between sharing and dedication of marriage. Uh, thank you. Now we go for the third question. Uh, Aya, since the Buddha has passed away into Nibbana, so will those devotees praying to the Buddha get the prayers answered? So I did mention, yeah, we always think the Buddha is somewhere sitting in the heaven waiting for our prayer to be answered. Yeah? So if that's the case, I think the Buddha will be very busy. Even other gods also will be very busy, you know. There are so many kinds of requests and prayers. And uh, so we have to understand, like the Buddha said, you know, in... Um, uh, trying to um, fulfill yeah, our uh, prayers, uh, which is uh, agreeable to us and uh, you know, we, we thought will bring happiness to us. And what are the, our prayers? A long life, yeah? we want status, we want beauty, yeah? we want a uh, heavenly rebirth. So the Buddha said, if by prayers alone, you know, then the world, you know, it's not lack of that. Every day people have been praying so much, yeah? But if by prayer that long life can be achieved, then I think it's quite easy, no? But everyone realized that's not the way. So the Buddha gave the answer already. Yeah, it's not fitting to desire for that prayer. Uh, but we said, you know, if your prayer is an aspiration, then it's different, yeah? Then having the right thought coming into your mind, you put your right effort yeah, to realize it. So the Buddha is not going to sit up there and then answer your question. Yeah? So I say, attain Mahapari Nibbana. So just like the Buddha mentioned, you know, the Nibbana is all the great hatred, illusion is cool off. Yeah? There's no birth and death anymore. 
Yeah. So uh, the Buddhists when go to the temple, the Buddha say, yes, we may we may pray for all this. Yeah. But that alone won't answer your question. Yeah. You must work towards or practice the path. Let's say you wish for long life. The Buddha say you must practice the path that leads to long life. For example, how to attain long life? The Buddha say abstain from harming and killing. So when you abstain from that, uh, naturally, yeah, scientifically, if explained, uh, they even scientists have tested. Yeah, uh, they said their DNA, uh, the telomere, uh, the, the like a tail, uh, will become longer. Yeah. If a person have the action to kill, their telomere, their DNA, the, that tail becomes shorter. So when they divide, it can become more shorter and shorter. Yeah. So this is also scientifically they observe. Yeah. So our whole being, yeah, when we do those kind of actions, is a kind of we say this karma, no? cause and effect. So when we do that action, what is the effect? The effect is because the path that you are practicing is shortened life. So therefore, in return, you get short life. So if you wish for a long life, then you practice abstain and abandon killing. Yeah. If you wish for, you know, uh, uh, what they call a heavenly rebirth, you practice uh, the path that leads to heavenly rebirth. For example, the Buddha said, number one, you have a conviction in the Buddha. Yeah, you have great faith in the Buddha. When you have great faith in the Buddha, you will follow the way of the Buddha. Second, you must have also practice morality, sila. Third, uh, you practice charity. Yeah. Fourth, you listen to the Dhamma, and fifth, you get the wisdom how to go to heaven. Yeah. So that is how you can answer all your question. So every wish that you have, of course, the highest one, the Buddha say enlightenment, yeah, and you will be able to realize it. And the Buddha say he prays heedfulness. It means we are mindful on what is the path, the way uh, to do it, and uh, to get there, yeah. And you will be able to realize when you practice that. All right. Yeah. Thank you, Ayah, for the very excellent advice. <laughs> That instead of just uh, praying, that if you have any whatever aspiration, we should live our life and uh, follow the path that uh, eventually us to what we aspire for. Yes. Thank you, Aya. I think a little time constraint. We have just one more question, a last question. Uh, Brother Leong Yu Ming, how much merit does one has to accumulate and gain in order to attain liberation? <laughs> how much marriage so of course uh, just now I explained about Sila Samadhi Panya yeah? so Sila Samadhi Panya of course uh, when you look at the Noble Eightfold Path uh, it is actually that we have to put forth the right effort yeah? the four right effort yeah? and the first effort of course is to prevent the unreason of the unwholesome uh, state there. Yeah? Second is to abandon when the unreason and awesome states arise, then we abandon them. Third, those wholesome state which has not a reason, we cultivate. Yeah. Fourth, of course, those already uh, with the good state or wholesome state that already you have in mind, then you maintain and increase them. And then through that, it will lead you to the right mindfulness. Yeah. And right mindfulness is where uh, we talk about the Mahasatipatthana, yeah? uh, the four foundation of mindfulness. Yeah? When a person cultivates the four foundation of mindfulness, the Buddha mentioned this is one direct path uh, to liberation. And of course, if a person can cultivate that, and that is also the first factor of enlightenment. Yeah? So of course, it's greater merits. And if a person cultivate that, uh, then it will condition yeah, the right samadhi, meaning the four jhanas. Yeah? And of course, that leads to even more knowledge and the higher skill, higher vision, and uh, it will lead uh, to the uh, right wisdom. Yeah? And to the right wisdom, to 
right liberation. So how much merit? So they are stationed, yeah? Each leads to another uh, higher uh, state and uh, <clears throat> until uh, the person realizes yeah, the four attainment. Now, what are the attainments? Of course, number one is the stream entry. Yeah, the stream entry. And from the stream entry, uh, if they practice further, of course, it goes to the once returner. And from once returner, it will condition to non-returner and finally to arahat. So there are uh, different stages of the development and how much merit then each station, the more that you are cultivating, of course, the higher the merit is. And of course, when a person attain stream entry, the Buddha said, they possess the noble effort path. Means mm -hmm. they are already in the stream of the noble effort path. So we may study a lot of texts and everything, yeah? but uh, sometimes to recall to mind what is noble effort path, we also forgotten. Yeah? But a stream entry actually means they enter the stream of noble effort path. Yeah, they are, their view are straightened. They already possess right view. So their uh, faith, they are confident in the Buddha, Dhamma, Sangha, and the threefold training uh, in the dependent origination is unshakable already. So if in a modern world, we say they already possess yeah, the visa to enlightenment and is irreversible. Yeah. Uh, not 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 like uh, uh, you know the the what they call things that somebody can take it away. No, yeah. So that uh, itself, like I said, how much uh, we just know uh, how the development, the station, and the, you know the state uh, that we need to develop to attain liberation. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Ayah. Sadu, sadu, sadu. Once again, thank you so much to Ayaso Mangala for the very interesting, inspiring, insightful, and enlightening Dharma talk this evening. And for the profound answers to uh, our uh, excellent questions from devotees. Uh, on behalf of all devotees from different parts of Malaysia today, uh, and also on behalf of the uh, my WESA 60 organizing committee, we convey our heartfelt thanks and gratitude to Ayah. Thank you so much. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. So now. Oh, oh, thank you very much. Uh, to all the devotees, thank you for attending. Taking part, partaking in this Buddha Puja earlier, and uh, is that we will, with deep respect, we will request Nirosu Mangala to do the sharing and transfer of the merits. Well, dear brothers and sisters in the Dhamma, now we shall do the Patugana, the share merits with all the heavenly beings. Recall to mind the time span and the marriage accrue and share this merit for their well being and happiness. Akasata Chabumata Devanaga Mahitika Unyantang Anamoditwa Chirangra Kandaloka Sasanang Chiram ra kantu de sanam, Chiram ra kantu mamparan, Etavata jamme, Sambatam punya samparam, Sape deva, Sape satta, Sape buta anumodantu. Sapa Sampati Sitiya <clears throat> Patidana, dedication of marriage to departed relatives. Idam me nyati nang ho tu, sukita huntu nyatayo. Idam me nyati nang ho tu, 
Sukita untu nyatayo, idang me nyati nang hotu. Sukita untu nyatayo. Making aspiration. Umina punya kame na, mame bala samagamo. Satang sumagamo hotu yavanipana patiya idang me punyang asava kaya bahang hotu idang me punyang nipana sa atjayo hotu. Sadhu, Sadhu, Sadhu. Now we shall do the five chants of salutation. Imaya Dhamma Nu Dhamma Pati Patiya. Buddham Pujami Umaya Dhammanu Dhamma Pati Patiya Dhammam Pujami Imaya Dhammanu Dhamma Pati Patiya Sangang Pujemi Imaya Dhammanu Dhamma Pati Patiya Mata Pitaro Pujemi Imaya Dhammanu Dhamma Pati patiya acariye pujemi. Suki Hontu. Thank you very much, uh, uh, brothers and sisters. Uh, who are joining us uh, from all over and uh, I'd like to be informed that join us again next week which is on this Tuesday 24th May for the next Dharma talk and this time will be by Venerable Dr. Dhammapala you may refer to your respective Facebooks for the posters or your WhatsApp group on all the information. So, brothers and sisters, mark it on your calendar and do share the link with your friends, with your relatives, and with the other groups. Brothers and sisters, the Dharma. We are end this talk today and I wish you well. I wish you and your family be safe. Happy and peaceful always. Sabe Sata Sukita Hondu.
Ah uh... 